More information is actually bad as a DraftKings and FanDuel player. <sighs> Guys, I'm begging you, simplify your process and then cut about 50% more because almost nothing matters. And here's why. We are back. It's the Joe Holka Show presented by Underdog Fantasy. Three reasons to eliminate noise and simplify your entire DFS process because a lot of people can feel overwhelmed on Sunday mornings making teams because there's just too much information out there. It's almost paralyzing, and I've been there. The good news is there's a few actionable ways to fix it going into NFL 2021, and that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we dig in, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, RunTheSims.com, a premium fantasy tool site for season-long DFS and prop betting, a new spin on fantasy sports and DFS tools where we're leaning on 10,000 simulations for each each game is the primary value driver. And as many of you may know, I was so impressed with what they're building. Run the Sims is now the official tools partner of the Joe Holka show. The exact optimizer and data that I'll be using to construct my own DraftKings and FanDuel lineups all season long. And we do talk about it a lot around here. It's actually super relevant to this video, but anytime you can find a system that just simplifies everything into one easy to use product, that's going to be incredibly valuable for every level of player. So if you'd like to make the smart move, like many from the community have already done, feel free to use the link in the description below to join us in leveraging the next frontier of lineup optimizers and simulation tools. Tools, which by the way, that link does support the channel. So thank you. And if you'd like $50 off in your NFL season bundle, be sure and use code Holka at checkout. Also, I'm giving away four signed NFL jerseys at the end of the month. If you haven't heard, it's absolutely free to enter. As long as you register a pristine auction with code Holka or use the link in the pinned comment of this video, all of these things, less than 30 seconds out of your life. So make some time to enter. Don't want you to miss out. Would be awesome for this giveaway to go well so we can continue to give away awesome prizes during the NFL season. But let's not waste any more time. <laughs> The first reason to eliminate noise in your entire DFS process is that the whole play whoever you want mantra actually an incredibly freeing adoption. It's not quite literal, of course, but it's surprisingly actionable in tournaments. And it doesn't happen overnight. Eventually, you just realize where you need to be spending your time. Things like contest selection, identifying leverage opportunities, correlation to make sure that you're maximizing those leverage opportunities, contest specific roster construction, and even late swap scenarios, maybe even in that order. Honestly, if you only committed to focusing on those five principles, for a period of time, you'll quickly realize that the plays and the picks themselves are far less important. We already talked about how median projections themselves are even less important. So check out that video if you haven't already. But I do have a story for you guys. I stream every Monday, Thursday, and Sunday during the NFL season. This is one of my favorite analogies to bring up. It actually comes from a finance class that I took in college on technical analysis. Not completely sure why this one stuck with me. But day one in class, they actually teach you about trend lines. And I'm going to use Bitcoin as an example just because it's more fun to find the graphics, all that kind of stuff. Basically, what a trend line is, it's a visual representation of direction and speed of price. So what that means for DFS is like which players are likely to score a lot or very few fantasy points. As a DFS player next, maybe you start creating your own spreadsheet. So we're going to think of those as support or a price level that's harder to fall below resistance, a price level that's harder to rise above. From a DFS perspective, you learn to value volume and opportunity over things like talent biases that you've had before. Now, the further you get into the weeds, that's where it can start to go wrong. So something like in finance, the exponential moving average, very useful trending like the direction over a period of time. But from a DFS perspective, maybe you're just getting too deep into strong or poor matchups because you decide that defense matters. You know where I'm going with this. It snowballs a little bit. Maybe you're looking at RSI and your DFS twist is that you have 10 fancy stats for each position. You got heat maps. You got a lot going on. And eventually it's just information overload at that point. You're not sure what matters anymore. You've got notes from every DFS show and podcast. You stare at 20 metrics per position and you still end up building from picks articles on Sunday morning. What are you doing? Maybe an extreme example, but you guys get the idea. Simplify, because when you've truly mastered technical analysis or DFS, you're probably back to trend lines and support resistance. The third reason to simplify your process and really just eliminate noise when you're doing your DFS research is that now you're exposing yourself only to what matters. And this is an active choice. It's not easy to get back to the trend line state when you have a comfortable process already in place for multiple years of playing DraftKings and FanDuel, but you also may just be giving yourself a false sense of security at this point. I'm not trying to say that all content is bad. We've already talked about this concept at length. Again, I'll say it. If you feel overwhelmed on Sunday mornings with too much information, it might be a good time to reevaluate your process and just trim things down in 2021. Before you go, let me know in the comments, how many hours do you spend on your DFS research each and every week? I'm legitimately curious. All right, good talk. Woo!